and welcome to another episode of the Outside Insider Podcast here on Philly Sports Network with myself, Liam Jenkins. You know the score by now. All things Eagles related, the last seven days, wrapped up and put inside the clear bags you get when you buy NFL merchandise at a game. The Eagles season came to an end a week ago and it already feels like an eternity, doesn't it? Like something just doesn't sit right with this season. And maybe it's because, you know, we've had videos on the channel already talking about just about everything there is. Or that just days after, you've got Jim Schwartz going off in Cleveland, you've got Mike Groh and Carson Walsh both fired, you've got candidates emerging. It's been a messy few days, to say the least. Like, it has gone zero to a thousand really, really quick. So hopefully, this podcast will touch on a little bit of everything. Um, But we're going to start off with a little bit of a lighter note, because... As, as much as this has been uh, a doom and gloom week in many ways, you know, that the Eagles out of the playoffs, so the playoff dream comes to an end, the illegal hit on Carson Wentz, the injuries to the team, the coordinators moving around. It's been a, a weighty week for the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, one former Eagle decided to uh, to try and cheer the world up, to try and go, do you know what, Philly? Doesn't matter. I'm going to get a ring. I'm going to join The defending EMLS champions, the guys who won it all, the Philadelphia Union, and I'm going to go and secure the bag. And that man was Jay Ajayi, all right? Former Eagles running back Jay Ajayi. Many of you know him from his iconic 2017 run, others of you from that one game he played earlier this year. But the point is, Ajayi decided to go, I'm going to play esports. I'm going to pick up a controller, I'm going to play esports against the best players in the world, and it's going to be fine. And it is definitely not a publicity stunt. It just isn't, all right? So, Ajayi goes in, his first competition was on Friday, uh, played 20, there's 25 teams in this competition, 25, and if you could just hazard it, have a guess where you think Ajayi might have finished, okay, I mean, bear in mind he's British, maybe he plays football, maybe he grew up loving football, you know, child and fat, nah, okay, that's just me, but, hey, even me, I'm a big soccer guy, you know, that's super child and athletic, that's my team, I play FIFA, I play Weekend League every week, I'm a big FIFA guy, but I would never consider myself an eSports player. Anyway, Ajayi went in and uh, he went 0 for 12. Didn't win a single game, Jay Ajayi, not a single... And you might think, you know what, that's expected, he's playing against professional competition. Well, fair enough, but you've got to at least be scoring goals, right? You've, You've got to have a positive goal difference. He had a minus 61 goal difference. Now, for those of you trying to work out how that mathematically is possible, I'm still struggling with it. But somehow, across 11 games, Jay Ajayi conceded 72 goals. I'm trying, I'm trying my best not to laugh because I understand it's more a reflection on just how good these esports players are. Like, I fully get it. Uh, I used to commentate on iRacing broadcasts and the world championship races they had. So I fully understand how much hour after hour after hour levels of dedication is required to get to that level. But he conceded 72 goals in 12 games and scored 11 11. So his esports career is off to a flying start. I mean, that went brilliantly. It definitely was not a PR stunt. And the union who've won it all, defending champions, went, nah, well, we'll bring in a new guy. We'll bring in Jay Jai. He bloody loves FIFA, all right? He is going to be mental. I'm telling you what, he is going to change the game. I've never seen anyone play FIFA like Jay Jai. And they're like, oh, really? Well, let's see how he does. That's a goal conceded every 15 minutes. And as someone that plays FIFA in Weekend League, and it's pretty good, not, I'm not awful, I'm not great, I'm in that, that midfield range, you know, gold three, gold two level player for those of you who play Weekend League, and that's shocking, that is, I mean, j- 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 change your tactics, Jay, play on drop back, come on, like, it, 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 use your noggin, Jay, sort it out, so, I'm not a fan, um, that, that was funny, it did brighten up my mood though, and I thought it would be fun to look at, and again, this is no knock on Jay, Jay, although... I did tweet him and issue him a FIFA competition in what I'm calling the Battle of the Brits. Jay, if you are going to respond to me, I'm going to go full Anason Gibb here and keep pushing and calling out until this happens. One-on-one FIFA matchup. Pick who you want. I'll take Charlton Athletic. You can pick who you want. You can take Barcelona and Charlton's mighty team will go all the way through. It doesn't matter to me. All right, you pick who you want. I'll pick Charlton. 1v1. We'll stream it on PSN. Loser has to donate to charity or something like that. Okay, that'd be cool. If you're down, I'm going to email your agent. All right, I'm going to email your agent. We're going to sort it out. I'll work my ass off to make this happen. I promise you. It'll be fun. But... Now we've got the fun stuff out of the way. Um, I could go into this podcast and look at 
all sorts of things. We could go back into the game against the Seahawks and I could sit here for 10 minutes crying about what's already happened over spilled milk, which is the illegal hit to Carson Wentz and the fact it wasn't punished and then Josh McCown playing, who we said Josh McCown came in, 40 years old, lifted the team to a degree, kept the chains moving, gave the team a realistic shot at winning late in the game. Turns out today he did it on a torn hamstring. Like, I couldn't love this man anymore if I physically tried. He's an absolute god amongst men. Like, that is unbelievable. Like, I groan getting up now. If I'm going to get out of this chair, it hurts. Fair play to Josh McCown. But the, the real subject I really wanted to talk about here today was the actual firing of uh, Carson Welch and Mike Groh. Many Eagles fans were happy about it. A couple were a bit more okay to Mike Groh. I mean, I was on the fence. For those of you that have listened to the podcast for a while, you'll know that my thoughts on Groh have been fairly consistent. That he was awful in the first eight weeks of the season, but our main complaints of being an awfully slow offense that can't get out of the gate, that can't score first quarter points, evaporated. And the team's lost their biggest playmate. Like, the Eagles lost... All three starting wide receivers, two offensive linemen, running back one. And all of our concerns somehow evaporated, right? You've got an offense. Just to clarify, it's a while I was a bit more on the fence. Um, Miles Sanders, as as we know, a a great running back, fantastic potential, easily going to be a star in this league. Um, His main problem with me, or main deficit, has been the lack of vision and decision making. So out of nowhere, he starts lining up in single back. He's like five yards behind the line of scrimmage. And what this does is buy him time to make more decisions. If you've got someone that can't make decisions or is a bit indecisive, you give them more time to do it. They'll make a decision. They'll feel more comfortable, more confident, blah, de, blah, de, blah. This also set up the play action game because Carson Wentz is under center the whole time, which gets him outside of the pocket, plays to his strengths, and the whole offense all of a sudden is no longer Wentz forcing the ball to playmakers who can't make plays, but rather the team's biggest playmaker dictating how the offense goes and I believe that like it or not Grove had a hand in that and I can see why at the very least Peterson would be on the fence or want to keep him around a second year I'm not saying they should have I'm not saying they're wrong to let him go because I totally understand every other criticism ever and he has the worst habit of saying the worst thing at the worst possible time but I can understand why Peterson would want to keep him so with that in mind We move on to Wednesday. The Eagles have an end-of-season press conference, and when asked about whether or not they're staying or going, Doug Peterson says that both Carson Welch and and Mike Groh, both of them, are staying in 2020, that they're staying. You know, they're in the evaluation process, but they'll be back. They'll be back. It's fine. And one day later, they're both cut. Brilliant. Now, they're both fine. They're both canned. Mike Groh comes to work with his bag, with his lunchbox. He goes, hey, Doug, I, I, I bought you a nice nice bottle of wine to say thanks for the season. And Doug's gone, ah, sorry, buddy. You're uh, you're on, you're at the, at the building. Stint's come to an end, baby. You're no longer offensive coordinator. And Mike Groh's listening to everybody hurts, doesn't get what's going on, and out the building he goes. Either way you look at it, it's embarrassing for Peterson to have to issue a statement saying, yeah, I said something yesterday, probably shouldn't have said it, he's fired now. Like, it's a bad look, no matter what the intent was. Now, there are numerous ways of looking at this, and there are numerous ways that people have looked at it. Um, all of them, in my opinion, stand for nothing. I mean, that my one of my least favourite writers, and I won't name them because it's not fair, um, published an article yesterday, which would have been Thursday if you're listening on a, a Saturday and wondering, but it was Friday. Don't worry, I got you. Um, for the, the Philly Inquirer, I believe it was Inquirer, um, basically saying that Jeffrey Lurie is becoming Jerry Jones because he stepped in and made uh, an exact... Because he's meddling with the team, all right? Cause he, he's getting in the nitty gritty and he's pulling stuff around. It's very Jerry Jones-like and it's naughty, Jeff. Naughty, you stop it, right? And you can, I mean, this is the same guy that wrote the Carson Wentz article last year, ripping into his couch. So I'm not shocked. I'm not even mad. I'm not even upset. I'm just concerned that there has been no improvement in terms of, like, where where is a good angle to take? Um, so this happens. And then there are other takes on Twitter of Doug Peterson is hurting his relationship with the media. And that I do agree with. I want to touch on that first. Mainly because, starting with all season long... You can't trust a word that comes out of Doug Peterson's mouth when it comes to injuries. Or, I mean, if you have a bingo card, you could go in, sit at that press conference with this bingo card, have the words trending in the right direction, day to day, updates later this week, I'm not a doctor, and uh, we'll, it's t- it was like a game time decision, like we'll see Sunday, all of these these basic quotes. Right? So if Peterson's, oh, some guys, yeah, any updates on uh, on Dishon? He's day to day, day to day, um, day to day. 
Dead day, dead, dead day, dead day. And you're like, oh, okay, right, well, we'll find out the next day since it's day to day. It's ah, day to day, day to day. Turns out six months later, things really didn't go to plan on that front, did they? That didn't go well. Same with Jordan Howard. I mean, there are numerous examples of players, Nelson Aguilar or another one, where you question what's going on. And I don't think Doug's being dishonest necessarily, but I do think there is a disconnect between what's going on behind that curtain and what's being presented to the media. Doug, if we're assuming positive intent, which is one of my favourite sayings is, uh, you know, a, a boss as a, of a company essentially, is assuming positive intent, right? You don't go into work thinking someone's going to actively try to do something uh, to have a negative impact. They're not going to turn up late on purpose, for instance. Um, they're not going to miss a deadline on purpose. They're not going to go out of their way to spite someone. So there's positive intent. That's what we have to assume and until proven otherwise, it is what it is. Um, but there is a disconnect. Now, if Peterson's gone out of his way yesterday and wanted to keep growing, that was his full intent, and Jeffrey Lurie has ripped the carpet from under his rug, I think that's been done for a reason, and I agree with it, okay? I'm not going to sit here and have a go at Jeffrey Lurie for, you know, saying that, uh, you know, that Doug has has lacked accountability or something. I think that there is this weird dynamic where people are like, oh, Doug's got to be 100% honest. On the same vein, he wasn't going to go out and throw his, his coach under the bus unless they're already fired, which they probably weren't. It was an ongoing discussion, so he's not going to ruin it. Like, you just don't do that. Um, but then there's the, the angle which I like, in a way, which is where Jeffrey Lurie has essentially looked at his best friend who's come out of a relationship and is a bit vulnerable, and that best friend has gone out with a group of friends they don't normally mingle with, and he's looked across the club, and he's being peer pressured into taking drugs. Now, Jeffrey Lurie has ripped that kid away and gone, stop it, that's a awful decision. I don't know what you're thinking about it. I'm looking out for you. You'll hate me. Thank me later. The kid's embarrassed. Uh, his mates are laughing. It's not a good look. It's embarrassing for everyone. But the guy didn't take drugs and it stopped a potential train wreck. That's the same thing. At the end of the day, Jeffrey Lurie is a business owner. At the end of the day, he is emotionally invested in this team far more than other owners, all right? You, you want to talk about the Cronkies and, and their action in the NFL. Look at what they're doing in the Premier League right now and it is shocking because there is just no interest there. All right, uh, again, from a, a chart athletic perspective, for those of you that follow soccer, we're just coming off a regime with the worst ownership imaginable. To have someone that actually wants a hand in those decisions that says, hey, do you know what? Um, this is in the best interest of my team. You may not agree with it. I'm going to make that decision. Fair enough. If, he, if, if that is the case, fair enough. Because that is now forcing accountability. If Doug Peterson, let, let's bear in mind what this offensive coordinator role persists of, okay? Doug calls the plays. Juice Staley... And Jeff Stoutland coordinate the run game, which leaves Mike Grow to dot a few T's, cross a few I's, other way around, and coordinate the passing game, draw up the first 15 plays, and watch Doug run the show. Now, if you fire the offensive coordinator because the offense has been bad, there's no more wall for Doug to hide behind. Because if he brings in someone else and they have the exact same role and nothing changes offensively, it's because Doug's calling the shots. And then that's accountable. And if Peterson's not going to be accountable in the press conference, if he's not going to, um, I, I suppose, be willing to cut a cord because of his attachment to the staff, then I can see why Lurie would do that. I can absolutely see why Lurie would do that. And that isn't a problem. I, I don't see how people are seeing that as negative. Um, the article that Marcus, I said I wasn't going to name him. The article that Marcus wrote was basically saying, oh, he's going to meddle too much and he's going to hurt Doug Peterson. Bollocks, is he? Like, he's probably saved him a year of bad offence, if anything. Like, thank me later, don't take the drugs, and off you go. Um, now, Peterson came out today on the radio and said it was his decision to fire Mike Grow, which, if that's the case, fair enough, be more accountable with the media, it goes back to square one anyway. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who pulled the trigger as long as the bullet hit the right target. It doesn't matter if it was Doug, if it was Howie, if it was Jeffrey Leary being a straight-up shooter. It does not matter as long as that bullet hit the intended target. That's all that counts. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like, the, the animus decisions are the same. That that had to be made. So I'm not going to sit here and say, well, Jeffrey Le- Jeffrey Lurie, the owner of a business, is a bad man for getting involved with a business matter that affects the future of his business. What a dick. Like, that's shocking. And that's a bad article. And I'm sorry, but as a journalist, it, it makes me upset and it makes me angry. Because I sit here, formulating ideas for ages, trying to bring you guys content. You've got someone that comes in and goes, that's bad. That's shocking. That How dare he? That's not a fan. Not a fan of that, and it annoyed me, and it's caused a lot of takes on Twitter. 
Um, I do think there is a distrust between Doug Peterson and the media. I don't think that's necessarily his fault, but it has to be improved because it is losing the, the trust of the media at this point, and that's not good. But at the end of the day, that's a bigger picture thing. As of right now, the Eagles are down one coordinator, could lose another one, and all that matters is they've made the right call in firing Carson Walsh, who was literally as useful as this bottle in trying to stop a flood. It's just not not going well, that is it. Not going to scoop too many things up. And an offensive coordinator who has just been under fire since day one. For better, worse, good, bad, ugly, doesn't matter. He's gone now. It's an executive decision, no matter who made it. Target's down, all right? War's finished. Doesn't matter who took the shot. I'm not here looking for accountability on that front. Look for accountability in six months' time. That's what we're here for. If you are on the YouTube channel, hello, thank you for tuning in. This is going to be the end of this video. The full podcast will come out a bit later. If you're on the podcast, it's time for Thank You Next, where I answer your questions on this show now.